Hello everyone. Hello everyone. My name is Abha. Thank you for seeing my channel. Today's talk topic is information security policy and standard preparation. Sometimes it happens. We do have uh, too many years of experience. Experience, uh, you know, let, let's suppose about technical level where we are actually working on the system in taking care of information security. Let's suppose if you are in an identity and access management, you are taking care of what type of user ID it is, what type of password configuration it would be, as per the policy requirement, how many how many levels of approval is required, like how to capture the log, how to get it, uh, things. So it means the role where we actually follow the policy, where we see uh, if we take an example of a password configuration, what is the password requirement and then either configuring it into the system or as a control, I would say the control owner or control tester on a periodic basis, we will be checking the system. Is this as per our information security policy or not? But after a certain level, when we when we go to an higher position, we may need to define a policy. If you get an opportunity to define the policy from scratch, so you are very well aware how to write it technically, how to see what are the password parameters which should be there, how many levels of uh, approval should be, re be required. Because we, uh, you know, we can refer many standards like the NIST standard, PCI DSS standard, ISO uh, 27,000 standards which will help us technically understand what are the requirements and we can discuss it internally as well. But the main main thing comes is how to structure it in a document. Document is information security and policy standards. So this is what our today's topic is. So I will be going to explain you how you can define these things in a structured format in a document. Let us go to our next slide. So here, when we are talking about the information security policy, first we can start with defining the policy statement. So what basically policy in, inside the policy statement we can define? We, we, can, uh, we can say that it's a fundamental significance of information security by delining a set of policies and standard in order to, in order to protect the company's information as such while maintaining compliance with regulatory statutory contractual and policy requirement which is pertaining to our cia that is confidentiality integrity and availability and you can also mention you know this is not a standalone document because uh, it totally depends how detail you want to put it Sometimes they just want to put the policy statements here and technically for the detail, they will be defining a separate standards for each and everything. For example, let's suppose the password policy. So inside the password policy in this document, they'll just give a brief where they, they say, you know, you need to be compliant with this organization password and all the, all the uh, let's suppose the assets which are having the uh, which are having the poly, uh, having the this company's data needs to be compliant with that. Okay, and we are following this standard. So in a very very brief thing, not to give the detail, or they can just define about you know the password complexity requirement is this. But for the detail, you need to refer the standard. So in so in that case, um, or even even though let's suppose you are defining the complete standard is here as well but it may possible you are defining the, the separate procedure and guidelines, which is on the basis of the application. So every application has a different way where you can configure these type of settings. So, so you can, in that case, you can also mention that this document along with any subordinate policy, standard procedure and guidelines set a clear direction for the information security and its role supported by the business objectives. So this is what or one more thing you can mention what all standards you are referring to. Let's suppose if you are referring to the NIST standard, 
NIST, NIST is the National Institute of Standard and Technology. Then you can mention which particular version of NIST. Let's suppose you are referring SP 800 slash 14. You need to mention that explicitly. If you are referring to ISO standards, that is the International Organization of Standards. So you need to mention ISO standard in the particular no, particular version of that. Let's suppose you are you are referring to 27,001 to 13. You need to refer that explicitly. Or you are working in an organization which is handling the card data. That can be the credit card data or a debit card data. You should explicitly mention that, like it's a come it's complying with the PCIDS standard with this version. So that needs to be mentioned explicitly inside a policy statement. Next comes to the scope. What is scope? Scope means whosoever needs to comply with this particular policy. The first is we can say employee of this organization, all the contractors who are working this in an organization, all the vendors or any other third party or if we, if we did some acquisitions, so all the persons for that needs to comply with their, this uh, policy or Whosoever is handling this organization data, it can be restricted confidential and internal data need to comply with this particular policy or which all assert are using this uh, handling the data of an organization needs to comply with this. But sometimes it happens. We don't we exactly don't know how many which all type of type of asserts we have inside the organization, then how to write it. Then we can write the things like things like that. This information policy includes information assets, including but not limited to software, networks, connections, application, system data, routers, switches. Then if you are having the POS machine, POS machine. So all those things you need to mention explicitly. The third part is authorization. So here we are seeing who is authorizing to support this policy basically who who is basically defining this policy who is approving this policy that can be information security governance committee of your organization because it may possible if you are at a lead level or a manager level or a senior manager level you have defined it but you are not the final authority who has approved this. So whosoever is the final authority, responsibility lies with them. So you need to mention there. The next, the next is coming. Uh, the next is coming corresponding to the policies and standard creation and maintenance. So here we can we can talk about who is responsible to do that here as well while we are defined we are we'll be talking about a quite senior representative who is responsible for that that can be uh, let's suppose CISO is responsible for that so then you can mention chief information security officer has a responsibility for the creation and maintenance of this policy and standard for this organization okay the next is come who is responsible for distributing it. So one one task basically to prepare it, create it, then to get it, you know, uh, distribute it to the different people who needs to comply with that. It means all the associate of an organization. Some of third party vendors and all those things. So it should be on a company's inter intranet not on internet but that those all should be having the access and they those should be aware from where it needs to be accessed and on a timely basis there should be a training there should be a questionnaire to see how comfortable they are with that so that here we are we are talking about who is responsible for that that we need to explicitly define here so here we have covered about five first first five points where we are saying what all information you need to put majorly you need to define the statement in which you are you are saying which standards you are uh, uh, you are following uh, secondly you are, you, are, you are saying what is this policy is and you know why you need to comply with this policy second is scope 
who all should be covered inside this policy third is who is the authorization party for this policy fourth is who is responsible for creating and maintaining and reviewing and updation of this policy fifth is who will be responsible for getting it distributed or make sure that people understand this policy this is our uh, today's video and the remaining five point will be discussion in our next video if you like this video please like share and like and share this video and subscribe my channel thank you so much